In this video, we're going to start with our discussion on long-run production, and that begins with the concept of an isoquant. So if you've tackled the concept of an indifference curve before, the isoquant should be very, very much familiar. And it's essentially an indifference curve, but what now we're dealing with production. So by formal definition, an isoquant shows the combinations or the different permutations of using L and K that can produce produce some fixed level of output, say Q. And it looks something like this. So say we have here uh, K on the y-axis. So that's the amount of capital employed uh, or the amount of machines employed. Then this is labor. And an isoquant looks something like this. Okay. So say almost similar to an indifference curve. Say this is Q is equal to 10. Q is equal to 20. So that's an example of an isoquant. Now, uh, it shows the combinations of L and K that can produce a fixed level of output. What that means is at any point along the isoquant, okay, any combination will give you the exact same output. So what does that mean? Say you have point A here. Okay. At point A, okay, that production combination will use KA, amount of capital, and it will use uh, LA, amount of labor. At B, okay, it will use... Um, LB, amount of labor, and KB, amount of capital. And all that means is that if I plugged in KA and LA to my production function, it will give me the exact same output as if I plugged in KB and LB. And that's because they lie, okay, they lie along the same isoquant. Now, Central to the theory of the isoquant is understanding that isoquants are downward sloping. And the reason why isoquants are downward sloping is very similar to, how, to why indifference curves are downward sloping. And it's because of the assumption that when output increases, for as long as the amount of one input um, uh, is increased without using any less of the other input, uh, the isoquant will be strictly downward sloping. So let's prove that. Okay, so let's prove that. Okay, slope. Okay, slope. Slope of isoquant. Okay. Slope of isoquant. Sorry for my handwriting. Okay, and uh, if you recall, okay, we have two concepts, marginal product of labor and marginal product of capital. And... Uh, it's assumed that both of these are greater than zero for the most part. And the reason why it's like that is because as labor increases, say marginal product of labor, uh, holding capital constant, that contributes positively uh, to the production uh, in total. And the same is true for capital. But uh, what we're trying to prove is that, uh, so the slope of an isoquant, okay, that's essentially equal to okay, the change in capital, change in labor along the same uh, uh, isoquant, so constant. And we want to prove that that uh, isoquant is indeed downward sloping. And to do that, we'll try and prove it in this manner. So first, along an isoquant, isoquant okay, both L and k can change okay okay any combination along an isoquant will give you the same output but um, notice in an isoquant in this you can have this combination say a you can also have a combination that's b so the amount of l and k that you use could be different and we can prove it by using the total differential okay total differential of our of the prod of the production function of the production function function so that goes like um, remember our production function is q is equal to f l k okay so taking the total differential that's d q is equal to partial f over partial l d l plus partial f over partial uh, partial k d k okay. So that's the total differential of the production function. Now, bear in mind, okay, dq, this term here, okay, 
That's the change in output for a change in labor holding capital constant. Well, that's marginal product of labor. Okay. Then this term here, that's the change in output uh, with a change in capital holding labor constant. That's marginal product of capital. Okay. Hold, again, holding labor constant for that case. Okay. Now, dq represents the change in q. But remember, along the same isoquan, okay, along the same isoquan, Q doesn't change. So any combination, for as long as you're along the same isoquan, Q doesn't change. So that's equal to zero. Equal to MPL DL plus MPK DK. And uh, what we can do is we can try and get this form there. Okay, we can try to prove that. Okay, so uh, we can simplify this as uh, if we transpose terms to the other side we can get negative MPL DL equal to MPK DK. Then if I devote, divide both sides by, uh, uh, I'm going to divide both sides by, uh, in this case, I want to isolate out DK over DL, so I'm going to divide both sides by DL, DL, and MPK. Okay, MPK. So, this one will cancel out. This one will cancel out. I'm going to be left with the derivative dk over dl is equal to negative mpl over mpk. Okay. Now, remember, uh, this is that derivative here. So that's when q is constant, okay? Because that's our assumption, okay? We know that mpl, okay, mpl is greater than zero. And also that mpk is greater than zero, when we assume that output increases, okay, as the amount of an input is increased with the other input held constant, so that's the definition of MPL and MPK, then we know that since it's negative, uh, so this one is positive, okay, this one is also positive, but we have a negative sign here, a negative times a positive divided by a positive, this is a negative derivative, okay, so the slope of the isoquant is indeed negative. Moreover, because of that assumption above, each isoquant that we have represents some uh, different level of output. Okay, so, and that's the reason why the slope okay, of the isoquant is indeed downward sloping.